Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel, I'm Bill. We're going to be in Dungeon Crawl Classics for this video. We are continuing the Spell Duels. This will be part two, where we talk about counter spells. Uh, part three in the uh, video series, we'll talk about the examples they give. So, let's read into how counter spelling works in a spell duel. Spells that counter, generally speaking, common sense dictates which spells can counter each other. Here is a general list. Uh, post spells that can be used to counter each other is the title of the list. Fire resistance will counter fireball and scorching ray. Magic shield will counter magic missile, fireball, scorching ray, lightning bolt. Dispel magic can counter any spell. Invoke patron, invoke patron depending on patrons. Any attack spell counters the same attack spell. For example, fireball counters fireball. The counterspell in action when a caster declares he is counterspelling follow these steps. Number one, first, at the very start of the spell duel, each player with a counterspelling caster sets a d20 in front of his character sheet. This is the momentum tracker. At the start of the duel, all casters set the d20 to 10. Number two, next, the attacker declares the spell he is casting and makes his spell check. Number three, the defender, counterspeller, declares a counterspell and makes his spell check. Number four, the winner is the high roller. Increment the winner's momentum tracker by one. For example, if the attacker wins, move his d20 to 11. If the defender wins, move his d20 uh, is incremented up by one. Number five, cross-reference the two spell checks uh, four to five is the no, the table. Spell dual check comparison. Number six, roll the indicated die and compare the to the table four dash six. Counter spell power. If the attacker had the higher spell check, use the attacker high column. Otherwise, use the defender high column. Modify the result by the difference between the two momentum trackers. For example. If the attacker's momentum tracker is now shown at a 13 because he had three successes and the defender's is still at 10, the counterspell power would be at a plus three if the attacker won or at a minus three if the defender won. Number seven, there is one exception. If the two spell checks are identical, table 4-5 spell check comparison will refer to table 4-7 of logiston disturbance. This is the most dangerous arena of magic, where different effects become commingled and extraordinary things may happen. Number eight, resolve any spell effect at the resulting spell check. Number nine, finally proceed back to normal initiative. Other character classes receive their normal actions. When the counterspellers count turns up, skip him and move on to the next character. Special notes. Here are some clarifications on spell duels. Spell check success. The attacker's spell check must succeed per the normal spell result table to have any effect, of course. The defender's spell check must also succeed. This means that a level one spell check needs a minimum result of a 12 or higher to counterspell and a level two spell needs a minimum result of a 14 or higher, and so on. Who goes first? Generally speaking, the effect of counterspell happens simultaneously, unless noted otherwise. That means it is possible for two wizards to both die as they launch dueling fireballs. Sometimes the tables below will indicate that one wizard spell takes effect first, which may affect the second spell. If order of resolution matters, the caster with the higher spell check always acts first. Multiple counterspells or counterspellers. Two spellcasters may attempt to counterspell a single caster. Resolve all spell check comparisons, then refer to the spell uh, table to determine what happens. Again, generally speaking, the effect of spells and counterspells happen simultaneously, unless noted otherwise on the tables. Aiding a counterspell. A wizard may not aid each other in a spell duel. 
Each counterspell is determined separately, though results may stack against the caster. For example, a wizard casts fireball and three defenders counterspell with returning fireballs. The impact of multiple mitigations of the attacker's fireball could mean his spell has no effect. Patron Invocation A wizard who invokes his patron may be countered by a wizard invoking the same or a different patron. If a defender invokes the same patron as the attacker and both spell checks succeed, both spells are automatically canceled. Ignore the results of table 4-5 and 4-6. If the defender and attacker invoke different patrons, resolve the effect as normal. Loss of spell. Certain spell duel results can reduce the check result of the attacker or defender. A wizard loses a spell for the day only if his initial unmodified spell check is below the minimum threshold. If his initial check summons sufficient uh, eldritch power to set the spell duel in motion, he does not count as losing the spell. The same goes for the defender's initial unmodified spell check. For clerics, the same rule applies in regards to their accumulation of casting penalties. Delaying actions. Wizards who are first in initiative order may wish to delay their initiative to be in a better position for counterspell. This is acceptable, but if multiple wizards all declare delay, the final order of actions is still resolved by the initiative order, with the highest roll going first and the lowest roll going last. A counterspell is all. A caster may use the counterspell me uh, mechanic only to cast a spell that specifically counters a previous cast spell. The counterspell special initiative action may not be used to cast just any old spell. The counterspell may kill creatures out of initiative order. A counterspell allows a wizard with a later initiative count to effectively skip ahead and thus the counterspell may have consequences for creatures that technically had a higher initiative count than the counterspeller. For example, a fireball countered with a fireball, where both spells go off, may kill warriors whose initiative count was before that of the wizard who counterspelled. So be it. Counterspells are special. And that would end that information. So we got the spell duel check comparison. Okay, so essentially, essentially, it's just a cross reference and tells you what dice to roll based on who got the highest. And then, if you're it's a tie, it has the PD, so the the phlogiston disturbance. Counterspell power. Um, this has the two tables if the defender's high or the attacker's high. You roll a one. Mitigate d4, roll d4 and subtract this from the attacker's spell check. Attacker's spell still carries through at its lower spell check. Defender's spell is canceled. So that's the defender high. The attacker high on a roll of a one, push through d4, roll a d4 and subtract this from the defender spell check. Defender spell takes effect at its lower result and attacker spell takes effect simultaneously at normal spell check result. That's pretty cool. So at if you rolled a three on the attacker high, you overwhelm, attacker spell takes effect and defender spell is canceled. Uh, on the defender high on a three, mitigate d8, roll a d8 and subtract that from the attacker spell check. Attacker spell still carries through at its lower spell check. Defender spell is canceled. And then as you get into the higher results, seven through ten, well, six through ten, the defender starts pushing through. So he gets a d6, roll a d6, subtract it from the defender spell check. Defender spells takes effect at this result and the attacker spell is canceled. And then the overwhelm effect of the attacker high from the, the rolling a three on this table 
just gets more uh, gruesome as it goes. And then on a 10 or higher, uh, the Defender High, Reflect and Overwhelm. Defender spell takes effect at normal result and attacker spell reflects back at him at the spell check result rolled. And then the Attacker High on a 10 or higher, Reflect and Overwhelm. Attacker spell takes effect at normal spell check result and Defender spell check is reflected back at him at normal spell check. Ooh, th this will tell you how bad the uh, the phlogiston uh, disturbance is. You're rolling a d10, but if you roll a one, so the lowest result you can on this d10, a pocket dimension. Both casters are instantaneously transferred to a pocket dimension that is spontaneously created by the interaction between their spells. They remain within the pocket dimension until one is killed at which point the interaction of their spell ceases and the survivor is transferred back to the material plane one millisecond after his departure. Observers see only a brief flicker and then the disappearance of the loser whose body is lost forever. The pocket dimension appears as roll 1d6. On a one, a mountaintop surrounded by a red clouds. Two, a bubble adrift in space. Three, a sweltering island in the sea of lava. Four, an upside down forest where the trees grow down from the sky above. Five, a dust moat atop the point of a needle. And six, the left nostril of an intergalactic whale. Very interesting and very descriptive. And if you roll a nine, the first thing it says is demonic invasion. So when the spells interact violently, they interact violently in very very entertaining ways so that's going to be hilarious i would enjoy playing that uh, i'm not sure how much i would enjoy running it as the game master but i definitely enjoy playing that as a player playing a spellcaster let me know what you think about this little section in the comments below uh, the next video is going to be the example of spell dueling where we'll read their actual example of a spell duel until we all game again guys